Hi friends, it's been a long time. We're gonna do a makeup tutorial and most of this look consists of liquid lipstick and you can do this with any liquid lipstick that you have. We can do a variation. I use it for the eyes, the cheeks, the lips. Let's do it. Honestly, I feel like liquid lipsticks are one of the best things to ever be invented in the world of makeup. They're great. You can use them for eyeshadow, for your lips, for cheeks, for contouring, literally for everything. The other thing that I love about liquid lipsticks is if you're using it for your eyes, you don't need primer. You don't need it. I'm taking, it's an Anastasia Beverly Hills color. It's called Naked. And you know what you can even do? You can just take the wand right here, start on the outside, and go all the way across. And you don't, you don't really need too much right here. And then I think I'll put some underneath here. I'll take a 217 MAC brush and I'm just going to kind of blend that in. I'm being pretty liberal with this color. And I'm just using the tip of the brush. It's a natural hair brush, so it does a really good job with absorbing. So it kind of helps disperse this product evenly. Look at that, it blends effortlessly. They're great. And a trick I've been doing lately is I'll take this color and I'll bring it down further, like almost to like fading onto the cheekbone a little bit. So I'm using the side of that brush and just kind of patting it down. And the cool thing about a 217 brush you can see it's crimped in the middle. So it can be a blending brush and it can also be like a brush to kind of pack things in. It is the most universal brush. You gotta have one. The great thing about um, liquid lipsticks as well is if you have an orange color, something like this one is great. Um, if it has an orange base, you can use it to color correct if you have some dark circles under your eye. Okay, for the brows, we're gonna use Brow Wiz. Uh, this is another Anastasia Beverly Hills product. They are great. The color that I usually use, it's like, it's on its last leg. So let's see how we, much we can milk. Yeah, it's definitely not coming out. So let's see how much we can milk out of this guy. Okay, not much, but we're getting something. Okay, yeah, that's, that's done. And then this one is Ebony, which is a little too dark for me, but usually with Anastasia products, you can um, kind of blend them in with a spoolie and usually you can make it work. So this is like the darkest color that they have. It is almost black, but I'm just so lightly, just so, so lightly just feathering that in. Oh, I was gonna show you guys how to mix these. Okay, so I have this color, it's called Abyss and it's from Dark Moon Cosmetics. Ooh, that popped right out of there. This is a pretty dark purple, okay? Great on the lips, great for eyeshadow. This is called Grim. This is also from Black Moon Cosmetics. I do need a new one of these because this one has dried out. So you can see how this one doesn't have quite as much oil in it. This is a MAC 194 brush and it's a synthetic brush. It's, um, it's clean, it's just, I've used it so much for liquid lipstick, it's kind of like dyed the tip but it looks like that. It's a great brush to have. So I'm taking these two and lightly mixing them together. So the Grim color is a little bit more of a brown and then Abyss is more purple. And when you mix them together, oh, it creates such a pretty color. Because I mixed with this brush, I have quite a bit loaded on this brush, but because it's synthetic, it does a really good job of like holding onto the product. And this brush is tapered to a tip on both sides, so you get a really nice angle. And I've been using this to cut the crease. So when you cut the crease, you wanna relax, kind of look down, fully relax your brows so you can see how your folds are kind of landing. And then you wanna go just above right where that fold is. So we can still, I'm gonna go right on top of that. And I'm only depositing a little bit of product. Now, it might help you if you just hold your skin here. And I wanna go like halfway. And let it fade off. Right, so that is where I want my crease to be. Look at that, easy peasy. I'm gonna hold the skin just lightly, just kind of pressing down with a ring finger. Go right above where your crease is, so where those folds land. It'll make your eyes look a little bit bigger. It's a nice little trick. And then it's always good to raise your brows as you get closer. You know, it's a little bit harder to get a solid line. Now I have this brush on the side instead of 
on that angle to make it really sharp. And I can already feel on the brush that there's not too much wet product on there. It's pretty dry, you know, and I can feel that with my skin and I can see that with how the product is moving. Even when they're drying, like you can still push them and move them around. Okay, so this is where I kind of take my time to just blend a little bit. And I'm taking this color and I'm going a little bit lower than where my waterline lands. I used to do my makeup where like I would match it up with that waterline. To make your eyes look a little bit bigger, you go a little bit more below. So like right there. And then we will end up adding a little bit more color right there, just a little bit. So like whatever's left on the brush, it can look a little uneven right there. Don't worry, that's where this brush comes in. It's fine that it still has the other product on there that's gonna help us blend it. Tiny little windshield wiper motions or little circles. See how that kind of smooths it down? Don't be afraid to add product to your lower lid. It will make your eyes look a little bit bigger and it has a little bit more of like a youthful look to it. I feel like a lot of people tend to take their concealer all the way up to their waterline, you know what I mean? And then you end up just getting texture, right? Because this eyelid folds just as much as this one does. So that's where we are right now. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that color naked. You see it's a little bit more dry now, which means I can add even just a little bit to that brush and it'll go a long way. You can see how those colors are just kind of easily melting together. They work really well together and they're different formulas. They're different brands, but they still work really, really well together. So now I think I want a little bit more of like a darker pop. By the way, if you're looking at the bruises, if you see bruises on me anywhere, it's because I do gua sha, um, which is like a lymphatic massage and you use a tool to kind of like scrape. I bruise really easily. I also get like broken blood vessels really easily. So if you see it, that's what's going on. Uh, getting this brush again. I'm getting just a little bit more of the abyss color. And this time I'm going to lift my brows, kind of tilt my head back, and I'm just placing it right on the outermost corner. And I'm allowing this color to be a little bit more saturated than my previous layers, right? And then you relax, look in the mirror, totally relax. So now that I have my eyes completely relaxed, I can see I can go a little bit higher if I want to. The great thing with using these kind of purple colors makes your eyes look really green. So I'm going to just fill a little bit in right here. Okay, okay. Don't tell anybody, all right? A little bit under here, just a little bit. For the lid, I have this Jeffree Star white and I bought it just for eyeshadow. Um, it is pretty dry and it does kind of like crease and separate. I don't know if they've updated the formula. I bought this a while ago, a while ago. Okay, so I'm gonna use a flat brush. This is a natural hair brush and I'm just gonna pat it down. Now, the good thing about this formula is it still is consistent with blending and kind of melting in with the other colors does that really well and it dries really fast too and I'll go ahead and give myself a little bit of a highlight right on the inner corner of that tear duct with whatever's left on my brush then we're gonna go into liner this is jet this is a what are they called Stalazi that's what it is they have a store um, this is the brand of makeup that is by the store friends beauty supply which I've been shopping at for a long time they're in Burbank this gel liner, so good. And I love it because it, it blends really well. And I like to kind of like blend the liner into my eyeshadow a little bit. And all the other gel liners that I've tried, I don't know, they just have a consistency. That's not it. So I have my liner brush. I'm going to load up a little bit. And I usually use the edge of the jar just to kind of shape the brush into an absolute point. I'll tilt my head back. So I already made a little bit of a line, you know, with that abyss color. And I'm kind of, well, actually, okay, I think I wanna draw on my wing first. So I used to, again, follow the waterline all the way up like that. Now, 
I kind of come down to, I look at the edge of the brow, I look at where the eye lid, like the crease actually falls off, I start there, and then I just aim for the edge of the brow. It's always good to have, make sure you have equal flight before you fill your liner in. Because this right here is the hardest part. So you can always take another brush like this and like just sketch it out. I'm going to take the tip of that line with my eyes totally relaxed and just kind of draw. So that's what it looks like. You meet up with your crease, lift your brows, use whatever's left on the brush very lightly. And if you have to give yourself a little bit of stretch, so now I'm going to take a little bit more. I'm just going to do right across the eyelid. Great thing about this gel liner is it is super silky smooth. We're adding more on the outer part than the inner part. Build it up. Make sure you give yourself like a nice smooth arch. You can always lean your elbows on the table if you have a little bit more of a shaky hand. All right, now we fill in so you can grab a generous amount. Go right over here. And so we're really concentrating on where the wing ends. And then we're kind of fading it this way to meet with the liner and then fading it this way to meet with the crease. It's always good to just pause, look in the mirror, really relax, see where it ends. Okay, load it up right where that wing is. Fill it in, have it the most concentrated, and then you can use that concentration to blend it, blend it, blend it. This is what I love about this liner. It is so easy to blend, it's so silky smooth, but it still has like a good substance to it. I'm gonna take that brush, I'm gonna take a little bit more of a base, which is still wet on the Petri dish. Just going to add a little bit more. Now consider that the gel liner is still active, it's drying down, but it's going to blend in a little bit more, so keep in mind that might make your product a little bit darker. So I'm going to just kind of fill it in right there. Yeah, I think that looks good. So when you're putting lashes on, you want to bend them just a little bit. When I land these on, the outer part is going to sit a little bit higher, and I'll show you how I do that. Oop, put a little too much on. Oh well. So when I put these on, I'm focusing on landing the band on the inner part first, right? So that's where I want it to be. And look, I'm going a little bit higher on the outer corner than my actual lash line. One, this is gonna be way more comfortable for you. I feel like when the whole band is right on your lash line, the way your eye moves when you blink, it's, it's more prone to be like irritated if it's just like following the arch all the way and it makes your eyes look a little bit bigger. I use a little bit of waterproof mascara, just a little bit. I am not the biggest fan of mascara, to be honest. If my eyelashes were just naturally black, I probably wouldn't even use mascara. I haven't been using foundation that much lately. This one is called Dose of Color. I do like this one. It's oil-free as far as oil-free standards go. So if you're a little bit more prone to acne breakouts, this is a good one. It also photographs really well. What brush am I using? Oh, it's another Salazi brush. It is a, it's a, it looks like a duo fiber, but the entire thing is synthetic. I have been noticing like some makeup trends, like some girls are just wearing so much foundation and concealer and powder and they just layer it on and like they had beautiful skin to begin with. You know what I mean? And I just feel like it may look okay on camera. I guarantee you it does not look good in person and it's not comfortable to wear it. You gotta let your face breathe. You know what I mean? Now I'm gonna use some regular lipstick. This is an old one. This is the Viva Glam Gaga 2. I love this color. This was a long time ago. Now, clearly, probably expired. Still does the job. I don't put it on my lips, but I definitely will use it for blush. And it looks really cute. Yeah, you can always tell if a lipstick is expired, if it smells a little bit like Crayola crayons. 
and you can call me disgusting for using an expired product, but as long as it's not near your eyes or your mouth, you're okay. It's not gonna kill you. So I'm placing this down right around the edge of my cheekbone, almost as a blush and a contour, really, really lightly. You can also put some right above your temple right here. I'm gonna use my middle finger. You can also use your ring finger if you want. I feel like I want to be a little aggressive here, so I'm gonna use my middle finger. And look at that, you get a very nice dewy glow, kind of a blush and a contour type of deal. See, I'm pulling this down around my ear. I'm gonna put it on my ear lobe just a little bit. Like, look at that, that's so pretty. You know what, we're gonna use a secondary color. Let's use a pink for just like right on the apple. This is another Viva Glam color. This was the Lady, oh, it's another Lady Gaga one. Yeah, she came out with two. It's been a while since I worked at MAC. It's a very light pink, just dabbing it right around here. And I feel like a lot of people are really scared to put their blush like right on the apple of the cheek. I'm telling you, it looks so youthful. It's so cute. And this is such a light color. Like, look at that. It gives such a nice glow. And the texture of the lipstick just sits on the skin really, really well. Really lightly just dab it down. We just wanna blend it in. So here I will use powder. And the benefit of using powder, this is a translucent powder. It's tinted, but it is translucent. And I'm only gonna use a little bit. So I'm going to place this down. And again, not that much. It's just going to help kind of set things in place because I still want this glow to come through. And again, like I have Nothing, nothing on the brush really. Just a little bit. Uh, now it's funny how much I like liquid lipstick. I think I like it the least when it's on my lips just because it's dry. I like the longevity of it. I think it stays for a really long time and I like that. So if it is a little bit more dry, you can add regular lipstick and just go on top of it a little bit. Adds a little bit more moisture and it prevents it from like creasing, separating, and then again, gives a little bit more of that glow. Yeah, that's a nice color. Very soft. Very soft to contrast this very heavy eye look. So I hope this was educational for you and inspires you to use your own liquid lipsticks for eyeshadow, blush, whatever. Also, I hope it re-inspires you to reach for traditional lipstick. They're still good. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I would be happy to answer them for you. And it's good to be back.